All right, so now let's take these two big type approaches, classical and p-value, and let's apply them to a test. Now, all of this table is given to you on your inferential statistics sheet right here. So it's the second page of your inferential statistics sheet. And you can see up at the top we have our requirements. These are the assumptions that you have to either make or requirements you have to prove to prove that you can make your hypothesis test. So let me add that in. So requirements, AKA assumptions, right? Things that you have to assume, otherwise you can't actually run the test. So you have to have a simple random sample of size n, of course, because we always have simple random samples in this class. We always have to have n times p times one minus p greater than or equal to 10 to ensure the distribution is normal. And then you have to have n less than or equal to 0.05 capital N, capital N being the size of your population, to ensure your samples are independent. Now, determine the null and alternative hypotheses. Note that P0 is the assumed value of the population proportion. So you have either a two-tailed that has a not equal, a left-tailed, or a right-tailed. We've practiced writing those in section 10.1. Notice, by the way, that the null hypothesis always has an equal sign in it, always. Step two, you will stake your alpha, which is your level of significance. Step three, you'll find your test statistic which is that formula, which is a glorified Z formula because it's a Z score. You have your value P hat minus the mean of P zero over, and that denominator is the standard error formula that we learned in section 8.2. All right, then you have to make a choice. If you're doing the classical method, you're going to use step four and five from the classical approach here. If you're doing the P value method, you're going to use step four and five from the P value approach over here. So whichever one is appropriate, then you're going to state your conclusion. And we already learned how to do that in section 10.1. All right, so let's actually go and do it. Before I get into it real quick, um, we need to talk about the words majority and minority. A majority means more than 50%, right? Which means for your sample proportion, P would be greater than 0 0.50. All right, then less than would be, or it's mean less than 50% would be a minority. That would be P is less than 50%. So just keep that in mind. Those two words kind of crop up for us sometimes, and majority means more than 50%, minority means less than 50%. All right, in a study from 2005, 304 people were asked to choose a physician based on two hypothetical descriptions. One physician was described as having high technical skills and only average interpersonal skills. The other physician was described as having average technical skills and high interpersonal skills. The physician with, with the high interpersonal skills was chosen by 116 of the people in the sample. A healthcare researcher argues that this study shows that a minority of patients prefer a physician with high interpersonal skills. All right, so we are going to test her hypothesis using the p-value method at the 0.01 level of significance. Show all steps. All right, I will do that. Step one, we need to create our hypotheses. All right, so hypotheses are either left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed. So if she was arguing that they're not equal to, that would be a not equal, um, less than, greater than. So where is that in this entire paragraph? The answer is just right here, the word minority. Once you know minority, then you know what your null and alternative are. Because you know that H0 would be P is equal to 0 0.5. And you know that H1, the alternative, is p is less than 0 0.5 and that part comes from the minority part in fact you'd actually probably figure out the let stand first in this problem and then go back and figure out the null because once you know minority you know that's less than 50 percent and less than 0.5 and therefore which i suppose i could actually change these to 0.5 right 50 percent 0.5 all right, once you know that one's less than 0.5, then you know that the null hypothesis has to have the same numbers, but an equal sign instead. All right, step one is done. 
Step two, everybody's favorite step is step two because it's always given to you somewhere in the problem. Step two, your alpha. Alpha is 0 0.01 because it's given. When they say level of significance, that is a fancy way of saying alpha. So let me highlight that for you in blue. This right here, those words. So in these problems, they will either be written alpha equals 0.01 or they will say the level of significance. And once they say level of significance, that's alpha. Step three, we need to find our test statistic. The formula for that is Here we go. Z zero equals uh, P hat There we go, hat minus P zero over the square root of P zero times one minus P zero all over N. All right, well, we're going to have to go figure out p hat for a second. So note, there I have it kind of started over here. So p hat, remember, we have a formula for it. It's x over n. So if that's the case and it's x over n, then we're going to need to figure out what x and n are. So if we read in the paragraph some more, we'll discover that x is 116 right here, and n is 304. Ignore the 2005, that's not a value, that's actually just a year. So we're going to say 116, so it's 116 over 304, which is approximately, grab a calculator, 0 0.3816. All right, or how about 0 0.382, how about that? Okay, so then when I go here, this formula, that's 0 0.382 in the front. Or if you like, you can just say whatever, 116 over 304, that'll work. And then P0 was 0 0.5, then 0 0.5, one minus 0 0.5 over N, which was 304, like that. Now that is a horrendous thing to try to enter into a calculator, but you don't have to try to enter this into a calculator. Instead, we're going to use some things that we know. Okay, So let me grab the calculator. I'm going to go to stat. I'm going to go to tests. And then when you're looking through the list of them, you might notice one that looks promising. The one prop Z test. One, because this is a single sample prop for proportion Z test. But that's what we're doing. We're doing a one prop Z test. And in case you forgot, I, I tell you right at the top of the page on your green sheet in your inferential statistics packet that you have to use one prop Z test. So there it is right there. So I'm going to grab that one prop Z test number five. Then I have to tell it my P zero. Zero is my zero hypothesis, my null hypothesis. So if you look at your null hypothesis, you assumed 0.5. So I take 0.5. X was the number of people that had what I wanted, which was 116. 116 people wanted the people with um, high interpersonal skills. 304 is your N. And we were doing a less than test. If you look at your alternative hypothesis, see how it's less than P0? If you go back to your alternative, there you have it. See the less than? P is less than P0. P0 being 0 0.5 in our case. Then you go down to calculate and press enter. And there you have it. See the negative 4.129? That's your Z statistic. Whoop. Come back. So this is negative 4.129. Done. All right. Now that's step three. Step four, we need to draw a picture. And it has to look just like the one that's on the inferential statistics sheet. So we are doing a p-value method. So you're going to have to pick one of these two over here on the right. And you're going to want the one that's left-tailed. So it's going to look like that. There, I've got the picture drawn. 
yes, you really have to draw that entire picture. You can't skip out anything. So you shade the little tail, you draw an arrow to it, you say that's the p-value, say what the p-value is, which I'll show you how to find that in a second, and then you say the z0. Now where did I get the p-value from? Well, the p-value comes from the calculator. Let me show you. And I remind you of that fact right here. You determine the p-value using the calculator. See it right there? Okay. So you're going to get it from the calculator when you run it. So let me look right here. Look at this P right here in the center. P equals 1.8, blah, 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 E negative 5. That means that it's five. the decimal point is 5 spots over to the left. All right. So let me type that in real quick. So the P value, P value equals 1.8 E negative 5. That's 0 0.1234. 418, right? Oh, I should put approximations in here. Okay, and then we got that from the one prop Z int output, or Z test output. Found from one prop Z test output. All right, then. Step five, we need to make a decision. So we either reject or do not reject the null hypothesis. You reject if your p-value is less than alpha. Since p-value is this number right here that we just found, we are going to reject h naught. And then you have to say why. You can't just say reject. You say because the p-value which is 0 0.000018 is less is less than alpha which was 0 0.05 or no 0 0.01 I apologize 0 0.01 so therefore you reject and that's why and you have to stay that then for step 6 You have to write out your conclusion that we learned about way back in 10.1. Let me go grab the page. Right here in 10.1, we said, if you reject H0, then you write, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim in H1, and you write out that claim in H1 in English. So for our problem, we will say, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that, and then that a minority of, and then write in what they said here. Patients prefer a physician with high interpersonal skills. And yes, you have to write all of that. You don't have the luxury of copying and pasting like I do. And just to reiterate, there is nothing on this page that you can get out of not writing. Literally every part of it is necessary. And all of it follows from this inferential statistics sheet. You follow it to the letter, literally, right? So you do every little piece that it says, and you have to write out your claim and your conclusion in terms of your alternative hypotheses out in words.